the spokesperson and has been the spokesperson uh, for the Africa. Uh, as you have stated earlier that you have uh, participated in the G8 as well as the G20. And, and also, I was at the UN, and the one who says the last day, and the fall would be at. Um, we have, you, I've seen several times that you have met with the President Obama, and uh, as well as when he went to Copenhagen, he made a call accordingly to the reports. What is your relationship? Has he spoken to you in regards to uh, having a dynamics, communication, to, uh, to uh, move forward to help Africa. Uh, his concern is to, to Africa. I know he have gone to Ghana, and as he stated that it was um, the concern of Africans to look forward to develop their continent or countries within. But have he actually reached forth and says that we will be willing to work with you or we have groups like the Millennium Challenge, which is not giving anything to Africa. Uh, being that uh, we have negative forces on the outside and uh, talking to Congress and uh, White House and the State Department about uh, violations which no one has an actually visited Ethiopia to see that Ethiopia is doing far beyond most other areas in most countries of Africa. Have the President of the United States, uh, Barack Obama, shared any concerns about Ethiopia? No. Um, on the contrary, um, well, of course, in the G20, Ethiopia was not on the agenda. On the G20, the agenda was a new framework for development uh, in Africa. And uh, on that uh, point, um, the African position and the position of uh, President uh, uh, Obama were completely inseparable. Uh, we have the same views as to what this um, framework should look like. Um, he was also of the view that um, uh, Africa should not be treated as a, as a, as a humanitarian case. Uh, it should be part of the solution. And, and supporting Africa is not merely one of, uh, an issue of philanthropy. It's an issue of self-interest. Uh, and that uh, was very clearly and uh, very... Uh, strongly uh, uh, re, um, by the president. He was fully supportive of the positions that we took uh, in, in representing uh, uh, Africa on a number of occasions. He um, said during this meeting that he supported uh, the position of Africa as, uh, as uh, uh, articulated by, by its representatives here. And so he was a great ally in this meeting. And I I had the uh, opportunity to uh, engage him on a number of issues. Didn't, he didn't raise any issue of, uh, of concern uh, as far as Ethiopia is concerned with me today. Ethiopia, uh, again, is moving forward. And uh, it has been also mentioned that uh, we need a summit uh, that have bring all the African leaders together as which we have had for the Middle Eastern, Asia, and other groups. Where are we standing looking for to have an African summit, as which uh, when the president was in the UN, he met with 28 of African leaders. But we have more countries and uh, countries in Africa than the, the 28. And also as far as when we do come to uh, the summit, we, there's a working strategy uh, to move Africa forward toward a independent uh, characteristic ideology. Uh, therefore, the aid that we mentioned, that you just mentioned, that we don't have to receive aid because we should be in a self-sufficient um, uh, ideal. Where are we regarding a summit for Africa? Well, the, uh, the meeting President Obama had it on the sidelines of the New York uh, uh, UN uh, meeting uh, where uh, 28 uh, leaders, including myself, uh, participated. Uh, was a very positive move uh, in the right direction. Nevertheless, as you rightly indicated, we need to have our own uh, summits where we can strategize. Uh, and we do have um, a biannual, um, uh, uh, twice a year summits 
uh, once in January, uh, every year in January we have a summit in Addis. Um, and in the summer we have uh, summits outside of Addis. This time around it will be in Kampala. Uh, by the end of July we'll be in Kampala. And among other things, we'll be re I'll be reporting uh, on the um, discussions here in uh, Toronto. And uh, the African leaders will take a position among other things, for example, uh, they will be uh, appointing who uh, will speak on their behalf in future G20 uh, meetings. Uh, they will be uh, preparing and endorsing a document of, uh, outlining their vision of a framework for economic development in Africa on the basis of which Africa can then engage the G20. Uh, and so we have the processes uh, in place. We need to make better use of them. The final question that I have for you in regards to a G20 meeting, we know that the Seoul and France is going to be in 2011. Uh, Seoul will be in, in the end of, I think, in November. What about an African Seoul uh, meeting? That's one, that's one, uh, excuse me, G, G20 meeting. The part, second part of that, in the lieu of the destruction that has come here in this city, uh, in regards to protests, and we know that certain things is fair and certain things are not fair. But what about those protests? Do you think that with that uh, thought in mind, would you be a, a contributor to bringing uh, the G20 to Ethiopia as uh, a host for the, for the summit of the G20? Well, we would love to um, host the uh, G20 uh, in Africa. Um, as you know, South Africa uh, is a full-fledged member of the G20, um, and I'm sure the South Africans would uh, want to host the uh, G20. Uh, it's not yet been decided as to who is going to host the um, G20 summits in 2012. So uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Perhaps after the 2012, uh, we'll have the opportunity to uh, host the G20 summit in Africa. You have been watching my Africa Channel TV. My name is Menelik Zelika, reporting from Toronto, Canada on the G20. See us on www.myafricachannel.tv. So long. This program is called Toronto, Canada, and this is the program that is called 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 the program that is called